By faith, I hope I'll do it. I've not seen it, but faith is the substance of things before. I believe I can do it. How? What's your evidence? You can do it because faith is the evidence of things not seen. The power you have not seen in your life, faith will draw it near. The strength you have not seen in your life, faith will make it evident. The possibilities you have not seen in your life, it is faith that will make it evident in your life. You will do it. And then we are told, you see Abraham, the Lord said, what before me? What before me? How did he do it? He did it by faith. Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, we are reading from verse 12. And the father of circumcision. So them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. Who also walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. He walked before God when the Lord called him. Maybe as you look at yourself, you're saying, where is the strength? Where is the wisdom? Where is the understanding? Where is the wherewithal, the skill to be able to walk before God? Your faith is evident. Your faith is a substance. And as the Lord has told you and called you to walk before Him, you will walk before Him. And it tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, walking before the Lord, walking in His footsteps, man thinks that's impossible, but by faith, impossibilities will be possible. Walk in health, walk in wisdom, walk in power, Walk in love and walk with confidence. Even when those things are not there naturally. But your faith will be the substance. Your faith will be the evidence. In First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. For even here unto were ye called... Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we, that ye should walk in his steps. How can somebody walk in the steps of Christ, footsteps of Christ? Christ, the Son of God, so mighty and so great and so powerful, by faith, by faith. To walk in the footsteps of Christ is all by faith. And when you have that faith, remember that faith is the substance of the things you are hoping for, hoping for, hoping for. It's not there yet. But what a man has seen, how will he hope for it? But it is when you have not seen it, I don't have the energy, I don't have the grace, I don't have the power, I don't have the ability to do it. Yes, but you have faith. And that faith is the substance of what you are hoping for. And it is the evidence of what you have not seen. There is an evidence in your life. And that evidence is what? It's faith. And it is the evidence that you will walk and you will do what seems impossible. If a man has faith, if a woman has faith, that's the evidence. That's the evidence. Don't look for any other evidence that he can do. And he can go, and he can have, and he can possess what you think is just hoping for. Oh, you some people will say that's pie in the sky. That is hope far away. Never mind what they say. If you have faith, you have the substance of things hoped for, and you have the evidence of things not seen. First John chapter two. First John chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 6. First John chapter 2, verse 6. 
he that says he abideth in him ought himself so to walk, even as he walked. So to walk, even as he walked. When you come to Christ, Christ becomes your example and your pattern. And it becomes your, uh, your, your symbol of righteousness. And it says, walk like me. And walk with me. And you say, but Lord, I don't have the strength. And I don't have the power. And I don't think I have the wisdom to walk like you. And do what you do. And say what you say. And act the way you act. And behave the way you behave. And have impossibilities become possible in my life. Like in your life. And Jesus said, what do you want? Yes, I want you. All I see is the impossibility. All right. Don't think about the impossibility. Do you hope to do it? Would you be happy to be like me, to walk like me, to do what I do, and to possess what I possess? Yes, I desire that. Then hope for it. Hope for it. Yes, I hope. I hope. I hope for it. Now, do you, can you believe for the things hope for? You say, but I cannot see it yet. Yes, but you cannot see it. But do you hope for it? Yes, I'm hoping that it will be so. And then it says, now you have not seen it. Your faith is the evidence. Your faith is the evidence. And once the evidence is there, that thing will become a reality. I said it will become a reality. And the Lord is saying, that's exactly what's going to happen. That you're going to have and you're going to receive what the Lord himself is promising you. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children and walk in love. Remember now, it's by faith. And walk in love. Oh, but that's not my nature. That, that, that's not my specialty. Don't worry about hope. hope. You hope for it. And then you believe that God will make it possible. You have not seen it, but you will see it. Because it is the evidence. Faith is the substance of whatever you are hoping for. And faith is the evidence of the things you have not seen. Whenever you see anything in the Word of God that says, here is it. Here is how to have it. Here is what you have to have. Even if you don't have it at present, the number one thing is hope for it. Hope for it. Hope for it. And then you believe that God will make it possible. That faith will be the substance it will bring something tangible, touchable, real, a substance of that thing you are hoping for. And then it will be the evidence of the things you have not seen it. And I want to tell you, that great thing you are hoping for, that great thing you have not seen today, you'll see it tomorrow. Because, you know, once you have the evidence, you are carrying that about, and then you look at your, you say, I have the evidence, I have the faith, I'm hoping for it. I've not seen it yet, but I know it's coming. All you need to do is just keep your faith. Don't allow anything to shake your faith. The faith of Enoch, that the Lord said, he walked with God. He pleased the Lord. And because he pleased the Lord, then the Lord did this Great, wonderful, marvelous scene for him. Let's come back to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. And let us look at something here. What the faith of Enoch produced. What the faith of Enoch, what he gave him. Look at chapter 11, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated 
that you should not see what? What? Death. Now, here we need to understand about faith. The great, great possibilities of faith. I want you to remember that actually the place where you not work with God, that, that was Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. And you will remember in Genesis chapter 3, it's when you have the fall of Adam and Eve. And then after that fall, God said, Dust thou art, and unto dust you will return. That was the judgment of death upon everyone, the whole of humanity. And in that chapter 3, God did not reverse it for humanity. You come to chapter 4, and you're going to discover that God did not reverse that. Everybody just lived and died, lived and died, lived and died. And then you come to chapter 5. And chapter 5 is just saying, this one lived so many years and died. This one lived so many years and died. This one lived so many years and died. And then you come to Enoch. You see, as you come to Enoch, don't you know that this thing was not even promised? That he will not see death. There was nothing like. There is somebody, there is one person that will not see death. No, everybody was to die. And then, see Enoch. Enoch said, even what has not been promised, even what has not been given, I am going to just believe God. It's like he went beyond the normal, the average revelation given to any man. Everybody was to die, but by faith, Enoch, he walked with God. And because of that faith, he was translated. Now, it's only when you come to the New Testament that you have the promise that the church... At the time of the rapture, the church, when Christ will come, that the church will be taken. The, that those who are in Christ, those who have died, there will be a great resurrection. And then those of us who are alive, we shall be changed, transformed, and translated. Caught up together with Him, and will not see death. What am I telling you? The promise thousands of years ahead of Enoch. The promise that nobody ever knew, nobody ever thought about, and it was not in the mind of anyone. Look at this Enoch. By faith he possessed that which nobody else possessed. You can become a special brother, a special sister by faith, and you'll become you can become somebody that possesses what appears may not even be for this generation, may not be for this time, may not be for this era. You know some people, when they read the Bible, uh, they compartmentalize. That is, they put things into compartment. Oh, they say this promise is for Israel. This promise is for this dispensation. That other promise is for that generation. This other promise is for that era. They put the promises of God into compartments. But look at Enoch. And look at the promise that is still for the church at the time of the rapture. And see him just walking by faith, walking by faith, and by faith Enoch. He was translated that he should not see death. Uh, let's think about another thing. Uh, death, when you think about death, oh, you see, that is common. It's a common tragedy. It's a common evil. It's a common sin for this generation, for this world at this time. But Enoch escaped that common tragedy because of faith. I want you to think about it now. Let's start small in your personal family. 